do you see? At some level the false prideful one knows he is wrong but is afraid to face the perceived consequences of being discovered, as mistaken, and informed or ignorant. He would rather hide behind the superiority feelings of false pride than live with the consequences of believing and supporting a lie which could cause the death or dishonor of his child and make him wrong in his belief as well. When ones are continually molded as to what popular opinion must be, though not based on the facts, they become powerless puppets of evil. They no longer are able to reason for themselves, because they have become apathetic and lazy and would prefer to believe all they are told from those they perceive or in the know. Thinking for themselves is an effort they choose not to take precious time from their television, sports and soap operas to accomplish. They watch their TV and take every opinion at face value by the human images presented to them who continually form and reinforce what their opinions must be. They adopt these opinions as their own, and will fight tooth and nail any who oppose their view. This control of their minds is known at deep soul level, and the soul is in agony from this deception. False pride can only be released when one is pride from his trance of believing and seeks to know the truth and no longer fears, because he feels helpless and powerless, the consequences of his personal responsibility, which knowing truth acknowledges and accepts. So, when you say to yourself or another, I am proud of this job well done, or I am proud of you for a job well done are you hiding behind the lie of a false belief and self-righteous superiority? Or are you acknowledging honest pride of self-worth and accomplishment of a truly worthy deed or action? You each must learn to know the difference, otherwise you will continually perpetuate an illusion of truth and create for yourself the victimhood which you allow to manifest because of your own stubborn ignorance. Such is the case with the truth which our brother, Hatton, is bringing to you in the Phoenix Journals. Many can't believe that this much evil has permeated your world and exists now right before your very eyes. We are not asking you to blindly believe these truths about your circumstances set forth. We are waving a warning flag and asking you to read carefully and reason within yourselves with the gifts of reasoning intelligence given to you, with God within you, so that you can get off your couch potato assets and find the proof. You need to know the truth within you and then take back your God-given power and do something to change that which you find reprehensible and against God. We are simply presenting the facts to you as our service to God, for he promised that in the end slash beginning time cycle, the word of truth would go forth to all who have ears to hear and eyes to see and it is going forth. And if you are prideful and think yourself so intelligent, wise and all-knowing, all believing that you could not be duped, because in your opinion space aliens don't exist and your government couldn't be involved in an evil conspiracy, or this, or that, then you are a fool and a tool for the Antichrist, and may our Father God slash Adam have mercy upon you. It is best to truly understand that it is the nature of your illusion that most everyone is exposed to and wrapped within someone else's false illusion of truth. If you wisely learn and understand the logic behind the cosmic laws of balance given of God and the creation, you will unwrap these false illusions and claim your true God power and connection. So too will you each learn to reason out of the truth within you, and as ye ask for the truth and wisdom of God and creation to be given you in all circumstances set before you, so shall you receive and claim the proof and the understanding as true knowledge within you, and not as belief in what is the opinion of another. 2. Everest Everest is basically another term for greed, defined, as, selfish and grasping desire for possession especially of wealth, avarice, covetousness. Now one who is greedy or filled with avarice is then possessed with feelings of excessive eagerness for acquisition or gain of some form of material object or wealth. They, therefore, are selfishly and excessively covetous and desirous of gaining something, not, because they need it, but because they must have it to be worthy, or be a winner, or achieve superior status in their image of what is worthy, what is a winner and what is superior status. It is the selfish covetousness of desiring more than one really needs of some material object, and in this time upon your placement, it is usually more money. One who is, therefore, possessed by his excessive greed will have many unfulfilled physical desires and will thus wish to fulfill them at whatever cost, physically or emotionally, to another or even self the acquiring of same, maybe. The seeds of greed are usually planted by at first the overwhelming feelings of self-failure for not measuring up to the images of success and winning which are constantly promoted within your various forms of media. 
it then becomes a feeling of deserving something without having done anything, or putting in the least amount of effort personally to earn or create same. It is this desire created by your media programming that one can receive something for nothing through what is called good luck which again implies that it is random luck and not personal power and responsibility which allows you to create that which you need. It also often means one's refuse to take personal responsibility for creating their own perceived lack or loss of material goods. It is in this time frame of your history which greed is blatantly and expressly created, encouraged and nurtured primarily by those within your justice system. Many ones who have become frustrated at perceiving themselves as the have-nots of society and who have also become the victims of their own lack of self-worth, are the easy prey of the attorneys who promote greed and no self-responsibility. It is no accident, dear ones, that your Western society has become the most litigious, meaning, inclined to engage in a lawsuit against another because of real or perceived damages to self, in your entire world. Your system of true justice is nearly gone, and those who nearly always benefit in every case are the attorneys from all sides of the lawsuit. It is through this now created system of injustice that lying, cheating and stealing from others is par, for the course and expected behavior for ones who wish to win, even if it involves the total financial and physical ruin of the one slash ones being sued. How do you know what your true intent is, when you consider suing another? You will first need to recognize what is your true motivation in your desire to sue. Have you truly been, whether it be unintentional or intentional, damaged? Have you recognized that you too have participated in the creation of this experience? You must confer with self and God within to determine why you chose the experiences and what must be accomplished or learned by you in making your decision to enter litigation with another. If you know that another has wronged you because of their own greed and selfish disregard for your feelings or property, then you, upon conferring with God within, may decide to restore to balance the wrong committed willfully against you. With the true integrity of your intent firmly established within, then God will assist to bring you the justice which you deserve and have earned. Do you need your life to assist God? Not at all, if you have truly been intentionally wronged, the facts will stand on their own merit of the evil perpetrated against you. There are still a handful of attorneys who truly desire to serve their brothers and intelligently utilize the system to bring justice, when they know it is merited. You must trust God to bring you the assistance which you need to bring the balance of justice which you have earned. Sadly enough, on the other side of the coin there are actually many ones who find themselves truly the innocent victims of being sued, will discover that, even though they know they have been willfully wronged and falsely accused, it is cheaper both financially and emotionally to settle with the accuser, than fight for the justice they deserve. They, the lawyers and judges trained and controlled through your ABBA, American Bar Association have created these tidy little shortcuts, for you, friends. They call it a business decision to allow the least amount of loss to the accused. Well, of course the attorneys on both sides are paid in full, the one wrongfully suing wins, and the wronged one pays, one way or another. It is set up this way. It saves time for the attorney, he gets a tidy sum and he saves his client money. Right? wrong. The accused finds himself guilty of something he is not and his only other choice is financial and emotional devastation by continuing his case which could go on for years and years and years. Integrity? Truth? We are sorry, dear ones, only winning, stealing, material assets at the expense of another, and striving to save self from excessive loss of such assets are the criterion of the litigation game, as set up by the Antichrist. Do you see, that it is this idea that ones adopt, that they must be perceived as a winner in the eyes of your society, and they are encouraged to do so by whatever means at their disposal with total disregard for honesty, integrity and personal responsibility. Winning is the goal, and it is defined in a way through competitive molding that one must always strive to win at all costs, because the only other choice is being a loser which is now defined as really being a worthless human being. Dear ones, in God's kingdom, there exist only winners, as each contains a fragment of the divine perfection of God creator slash creation. Remember, you are not in competition with any other fragment, for each has unique and individual abilities and talents given of our Father. None is more or less in reflection of importance unto God slash Eden. Each has unique creative potential for expanding the awareness and beauty of the constant enfoldment of God and the creation. 
you must recognize that, when you feel competitive against another, that which is behind the illusion of competition is that you fear being unworthy in comparison to the abilities of another. How can you compare one expression of God with another? All expressions add to the unfolding discovery of the One Divine Self. We would now like to discuss an activity which you once called gambling. Gambling, as defined in your dictionary, 1. To risk or bet something of value on the outcome of a game of chance, etc. 2. To take a risk to obtain a result. We, your brothers of God's Cosmic Council, would like to point out to you, that for many of you, the biggest and most adventurous risk or gamble you make is, when you choose to experience within the veil of forgetting here on third dimensional earth plane. All other risks you may take in physical form pale considerably next to this one, when you truly understand that you risk your soul becoming lost in the eternity of the illusion of matter, and thus also you risk the spiritual freedom and salvation of your soul, when you choose to experience here. What is the game you are gambling for? The challenge of the opportunity through manifested experience to conquer and rise above the illusion you have created of what is God and what is anti-God or adversary to gain true and limited God power and wisdom. You have the challenge to self and to the one all that is of incarnating without memory of your divinity and connection with God within you. You live in the illusion of separation to journey again onto the discovery of the glory of your soul connection to the divine holy one all that is. Creator slash creation. You must know, dear ones, that God slash Adam and the entire cosmic lighted brotherhood rejoices when one of his own finds his way back home, through the muck and mire of illusion, to his fold of oneness with all that is. This means, dear ones, that through the desire to know self comes the recognition of God, then the recognition of unity with all, and then when the recognition of the folly of Antichrist is understood, then you can reclaim your God power and the Antichrist no longer can seduce and take away from you the truth of your connection with God and your divinity within. You have reclaimed yourself, as the spark of Godness which you are and always have been. Oh, what joy there is in the kingdom of God! So all you gamblers out there may by now be wondering about, whether it be right or wrong in God's kingdom to gamble your physical assets, such as money, for the opportunity of higher gain. What be your motivation, dear one? Is it the fun of challenge to self of the playing of the game? Is it desire to win? Is it desire to lose? Is it greed or desire for more than you need of physical assets which motivates you? Is it desire for status or recognition among your peers you seek? You see, gambling or taking risk, in itself is not right or wrong, it is the motivation and true intent of the one who gambles or takes a risk which defines the rightness or wrongness of the activity. And true intent can only be known by God within each one. We would say that every move or decision you make, whether it be in your relationships, in your business, home or whatever, is in essence a gamble, since you can only weigh the outcome of gain upon what is your true intent and desire within the choice or decision. Every choice is a risk, if you do not know what it is you truly desire to create. If you are fulfilled by the fun and challenge to self of simply playing the game and it does not become obsessive need to win or lose, then enjoy yourself. If you truly learn to monitor the intent of why you play the game of risk, whether it be business or horse racing, then you will also learn how to monitor and balance the level of success you need to manifest, to keep in the playing, against the degree of losses which you can afford. 3. Gluttony. We will first define gluttony by defining what is a glutton, one who eats to excess. 2. One who has a great excessive appetite or capacity for something. The key to understanding what is gluttony is that it is the act of having excessive, beyond reasonable need, appetite or desire for anything of the physical state of being. It could be food or one could be what is termed a glutton for punishment myself or another, 